Welcome back to Renewing Ancient Rhythms. Session five, we will look at incarnating the love of Christ and what that means. Henry Nowen gave this quote, our humanity comes to its fullest bloom in giving. We become beautiful people when we give whatever we can give, a smile, a handshake, a kiss, an embrace, a word of love, a present, a part of our life, all of our life. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to earth. Thank you for being willing to humble yourself so that we could know you and know that you fully understand. You've lived this life. It was not easy, but it was also beautiful. I'm just so thankful that you understand, you can relate. And where would we be had you not come to earth? in the form of a baby and grown up and taken our sins upon you. So thank you for the freedom that we have because of you, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer. Amen. We're going to look at the incarnate love of Christ. Webster's definition of to incarnate, the verb version of it, is to embody or to represent a deity or spirit in human form. It's the idea that God incarnates himself in man, as Jesus did. We're going to read a few scriptures. John 1.14 is the first one. Gospel of John 1.14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Matthew 25, 34. 25, 34 through 40. Says, Then the king will say to those who are on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. Wow. Next passage is Mark 12, 28 through 31. Mark 12, 28 through 31. It says, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he he asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, 
Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding. The next passage is John 13, 14 through 17. John 13. 14 through 17. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I say to you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So in all these passages, we see this command or this urge to love others in very practical, tangible ways by serving them, by visiting them, by dressing them, by feeding them. Um, And that is to love Jesus. Um, It's among the greatest of the commands. It is the greatest commandment that put together with loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is how we incarnate the love of Christ. Just as he became human and dwelt among us, So now we have a chance to put him on us and carry that out in action. That's a real, uh, it's a real honor. And it gives us really clear direction for what actions to take. So I want to ask you, can you think of an example of how that might play out in your day-to-day life? Considering the poor, the widows, orphans, those in prison, the marginalized, the sick, those discriminated against, the hungry, the infant, the elderly. Do you have some idea of how you could help promote justice for the helpless? Write down your answer as it comes to you. We're going to practice the discipline of blessing others or giving encouragement. This falls under that category of incarnating the love of Christ. Page 198. This comes from a desire to instill courage, confidence, and hope to others by expressing the delight that God has for them. So to encourage a person is to give them courage. To bless someone is to speak the truth of God and what he sees in them over them. When we are blessed, which literally is to speak well of, we are encouraged and we're better able to internalize our value, worth, and dignity. It's not self-centered neediness to long for validation. We even see in the scripture that God the Father validated and blessed his son, Jesus before he had done any public works. So he wasn't praising him for accomplishing great tasks or feats or miracles. He was blessing him because he loved him. He blessed him saying, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Mark 1, 11. God's love wasn't tied to anything Jesus produced. 
He simply delighted in him. It was a divine recognition of how deeply wonderful Jesus was. And God gives us that example for blessing others. We can recognize how wonderfully made they are. And speak that, speak that truth, remind them, build them up. The truth is we are precious in God's eyes. We can pass that on through words, body language, and even gazing lovingly at another person. It's important not to flatter when you're blessing or encouraging a person, nor to compare them with another. Those are empty and they don't really build up. So check your heart first and um, truly consider what are the traits that God has given this person? What is an outstanding character trait that they're demonstrating or a wonderful thing um, that they have done for another, perhaps? Blessing not only benefits the recipient, but also the giver. It enlarges our hearts when we bless another. So it's a win-win situation. I encourage you to practice it, to give it a try, and build others up around you more frequently. Next, I'd like you to craft a blessing for two people. If you have a group that you're meeting with today, I want you to prepare a blessing for the person on your right and the person on your left. If you're home studying or you are alone at this time, I'd like you to prepare a blessing for two people in your life who come to mind. So ask God to lead you to a scripture or an encouragement about something about their character, their talents, or their behavior that's godly or a blessing to others around them. And remember not to flatter. Don't say anything that's insincere. It should be absolutely truth. Absolutely true. And you can ask God to give you divine insight. So ask God and listen. And then use your words to build that person up according to the truth of who they are and how loved they are and how precious they are in God's sight. So please either write these blessings down on a piece of paper or you can write them in an email or a text, but deliver them as soon as you can so that person can receive that encouragement from you today. Then we're going to wrap up with reviewing our rule for life. So go ahead and fill in your rule for life as it sits now with any amendments that you needed to do um, to get this to work well for you. And then continue to practice your rule. I wonder. Uh, what your impressions are and how it's going for you so far. Before we move on to session six, I wanted to give you a little insight into the art project that I've been working on and how that is coming along, at least in my mind. Some of it I have done now, but I'm going to compile the pieces that I have and show you what I've come up with at the end of our class after session six. But for now, I'd like to just show you, uh, my idea is I want a physical representation of my rule for life to remind me of those key spiritual disciplines that are really important to me and that help me grow in the right direction. So my thought was to take some palette boards and to stain them, to lightly paint them in some blues and grays and make a, a piece by assembling a few of the boards. And I'm using materials that I have around my house and my garage um, and in my yard. So ideally, you can create something using material that you have at home. And so I've assembled those palette boards and I want to dry flowers and ferns 
and then also hot glue gun some twigs onto that and then ultimately paint my keywords or spiritual disciplines onto that piece of art that I'm going to hang on my wall as a reminder. The first step for me was uh, picking some pansies and leaves. I have a leaf like this, um, some ferns, and drying them between paper in heavy books. Oh, I even hit the herb garden and got this oregano, mint, oregano, a lot of different things can work. Um, this, I'm not sure what it's called. Maybe some form of baby's breath. <laughs> it was part of my wildflower packet that popped up <laughs> this summer. But I do know from personal experience that pansies um, pressed and dried really well and they maintained their color. So I grabbed some of these Johnny Jump Up or pansies. And then I started thinking, even this morning, what if we were to press and dry some blades of grass? Wouldn't that look cool? Then once they're pressed and dried, you can glue them onto the wood. So I'll show you what I have so far. A couple weeks ago, I pressed some flowers and ferns to get me started so that I could assemble more quickly. So here are the ferns. This is dried and pressed. Uh, the color is just about the same. That's incredible. So I have some ferns. There's a leaf, totally dry. And I know I have some pansies I wanted to show you. Oh, this is that baby's breath type wildflower. That'll be so pretty on wood. And pansies. Check out these pansies. Oh, so pretty. Let me see if I can pull it off. The paper, yep. So beautiful. So, once I have my dried flowers and leaves and ferns laid out in front of me, I am taking regular Elmer's glue, squirting it into a little bowl, and then adding water and stirring it up with a brush. Stir it up and that makes a paste about half and half, about 50-50. Then you brush the paste onto the wood or the paper if you were making a card or framing a piece of paper. And you lie the dried flour on top, then you take more paste and brush that on top of the flour or the fern, the dried flour or fern. And then leave it to dry. And it dries right in place. It's pretty awesome. Then, I was walking out in a field and found these wonderful twigs. These are not just twigs. They are actually from the root system of a tree that blew over. <laughs> so I'm going to take a hot glue gun and glue these onto my um, palette boards. And this is going to remind me that, yes, I aim to grow straight, but I'm not perfect, and I have God's grace. We are practicing grace-filled rhythms, <laughs> not have to be perfect rhythms. <laughs> Jesus is perfect. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue these on to kind of the sides of my palette after having pasted on my flowers and ferns. It'll make it look more natural and using my hot glue gun, some glue sticks. Then, lastly, first I'm going to lightly pencil in my uh, keywords that remind me of my rule for life. And then I'll use some nice bright white paint, titanium white acrylic is what this is. Uh, it shows up really bright and I will 
do my best to script some letters in. Um, and that will be my rule of life. I hope to put it up in my office or in my home um, to remind me to walk in step with God, to stop and spend time with Him, to rest and reflect on Him. And in doing so, become more like Jesus. Be filled, be filled with His presence and um, rest in the peace that He gives me. In the next session, we are going to discuss relinquishing the false self. So I'll see you in session six.